I've seen this raw strength only once before. It didn't scare me enough then. It does now. Here's your look at the Hot Toys Star Wars Luke Skywalker Deluxe version. The product code for Luke Skywalker is MMS458, and this is Luke depicted from Star Wars The Last Jedi. If you are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you can head on over to alteregocomics.com and order yours today. The first thing we're going to do with Luke Skywalker is figure out how tall the figure stands. Just so you guys know, it's the least I can do as this humbled reviewer. From his feet to the very top of his head, right there, right there, you're looking at a figure that stands 11 and a half inches in height, which in centimeters, let me go ahead and do that right now, translates to shy of 30 centimeters. The figure is 29.2 centimeters tall. For a display stand, he comes with this. Now, I know at the beginning of this review, you probably saw a lot of other things on here. Well, this is the bare bones starter, if you will, of the display stand. Actually, kind of a nice, clean, pristine way of displaying the figure if you want, don't want to get crazy with the extra interchangeable plates that will go on top. On the front, you've got Star Wars Luke Skywalker. I have to admit, though, I'm not super crazy by the way that they placed this placard. They've kind of just shuffled Luke's name over to the far corner. I think I much more, much would have preferred if the name had just been written across the front. A little bit easier to kind of make out and see. Standard crotch cradle also is supported at the very top of the neck, and then you can just put Luke's uh, legs over top of that. We'll look at that in a second. The other thing he does come included with, at least for display stand options, is he comes with these interchangeable plates. No strangers to collecting the six scale figures of Star Wars, you often at times see these interchangeable plates, kind of these little extra ways to add some diorama appeal to the otherwise plain nature of the bases. You're simply gonna just detach this like so. And we're gonna go ahead, let's add this one, because this is probably gonna be the one that most people will probably gravitate a little bit more towards. It does look like the top cliff facing of the planet Acto, in which, of course, Rey follows Luke Skywalker, uh, his, his kind of mapping system eventually finding him at the very end of uh, The Force Awakens. And of course, this is the top in which she finds him. Kind of a little, like I said, kind of a stone face. Actually, from a distance, it kind of looks more so like you're looking up here and you're looking down on terrain down below. I can kind of see like what could be trees, what could be rock faces. But again, this is just where the figure is going to be standing on top of. What's interesting, though, is that 
the Planet Octo was actually filmed in Ireland. So big fan of Ireland myself. I didn't obviously recognize the landscape first and foremost, but it did kind of look like Ireland for me. And then, uh, of course, looking at it later on, it was filmed in, I think, Shellig Michael, the island of Shellig Michael, located in Ireland. Just a little FYI. The other thing that it does come included with as well, something a little bit more familiar, at least from its red palette, to something we would have saw with The Last Jedi poster. Often at times the posters kind of reflect one color scheme. And for Last Jedi, you could certainly say that the color scheme for this movie, and of course the final scene of, with the, the little skidding uh, ships on the planet, was the color red. So you kind of get a red motif here. Luke Skywalker on the one side, the Millennial Falcon, Millennium Falcon right in the middle there, and then a rebel symbol there on the side. So a couple of different options that you can go with and display. One thing, when it comes to actually displaying it and putting the adjustable neck in, there are two slot placements. The uh, templates, as you can see right there, only fits over the first row. The second row is completely lost and covered over, so when you are putting this in, obviously you're only going to be putting it to the very front. Just snaps into place, making sure everything is lined up. There we go. Snap this into place, then you can take your figure and put the figure over top like this. Again, it's entirely up to you, but at the very least, I'm glad that they do give you a couple of different changeable plate options, depending on how you want to display the figure. Looking at Luke's exclusive accessories, I figured we'd have a look at the exclusives first and foremost, because if you do get the exclusive rather than the standard release Luke, these are the things that make up the exclusive accessories. So we'll have a look at those right now. And FYI also, I think I might have actually said Shellig Michael. It's actually Skellig Michael Island. A point I feel the need to just to add in there. Nonetheless, though, first of the three accessories that we can have a look at is Luke's backpack. And I'm actually rather surprised to be saying this, that this is part of the exclusive accessory uh, inclusions, when I really do think, like, the backpack, for starters, should have really been something that came included with the standard. Now, I grantedly picked up the exclusive, knowing that I was going to be wanting to get it specifically for the backpack, and not really necessarily for the other things as well, because when I want to display Luke, I'll want to display him this look of Luke. I'd want to display him with the backpack. The backpack is more design than function. None of the pockets are something that can be opened up. None of the things that are wrapped around the backpack can be removed, like the twigs and sticks, the bedding and rope, and certainly the milk bottle, <clears throat> milk bottle, uh, none of which can be removed from the backpack. It's permanently just in place. There's a little bit of padding that's been added also to the backpack, so it just kind of fills it out, even though it's not something, again, that you can open up for yourself. Now, to put this on Luke is simply what you would be doing with a small child, putting a knapsack or backpack on them. He's just going to bend the arms back and just fit this over his arms like so. There we go. I'm only showing this to the individuals who have never put a backpack on a six inch figure. So that's basically how it works. And I guess that would how it would also work too if you're putting a backpack on anybody. Except for yourself. Except for yourself. You're going to be bending your own arms and you know what I mean. Anyways, there is what it looks like. You may want to also just kind of bring down everything when you're all finished, set, and done. And there you have Luke displayed with it. Again, ideally, for the way he looks at this part in the film, because he's had a couple of different appearances, different looks over the two films, Last Jedi and then before that, The Force Awakens. But I really do like this one as my favorite look for Luke. Even I prefer this look really versus his later look near the end of the film. So I'll probably again want to display him with the backpack. That's just my own personal preference. Also to come included with the exclusive release, you get yourself a lightning rod. A lightning rod. Which again, kind of looks like something that Rey had carried around with her for the longest of time in The, uh, the Force Awakens. It's got a little bit of roping there, kind of tied off onto the top. It's not really a whole lot to be said for it, in all honesty. Likely, again, for me, wanting to pick up an exclusive, I'd be picking it up for the backpack, and at the very least, maybe for the Porg as well. The lightning rod is something that also comes included with the figure. Last and certainly not least, for the exclusive offerings, you get yourself a mid-flight, kind of leaping Porg. 
a rather cute little chap. Um, it doesn't have necessarily the means to, well, I guess you could prop it onto Luke's arm, kind of just rest it on top of his arm, but at the very least, it can be removed from its stance, so I do like that. Um, would have been nice also if they had included a couple of other porgs in various different positions. Maybe a couple of the ones just sitting there looking up at Luke would be ideal. But I must say, for what it is, it's a rather cute little representation of the porg. An adorable little critter, I have to admit. I thought the porgs were these cute little cuddly creatures. Shame they get eaten, but nonetheless, the cute little porg comes included with Luke Skywalker. Whether, again, you want to display it with, without, I should say, or if you want to display it with the display stand. Seeing as though we've already had a look at Luke's exclusive accessories, if you get the exclusive version, that is, why don't we now follow suit by having a look at the standard-issued accessories that come include with the regular figure if you don't get the exclusive Luke. Why don't we first start with the most notable of the accessories. He comes with his blue-bladed lightsaber. This is one thing that I kind of wish we could have either gotten one or two different versions of the lightsaber. While it does look good, and it, you can see the blade itself, if you want to call the lightsaber beam a blade, but seeing as this is a translucent blue plastic, it does look good and all, but it doesn't have any way to remove it, not that it, which of it I can see. The hilt is done very nicely in silver, and you've got all the noted buttons and uh, little switches all colored as well in their, in their appropriate colors. But again, I kind of wish the blade could have been something that could have been taken off so that you had solely just the hilt. I know if you've collected enough of Luke Skywalker's or if you've collected Ray, I think Ray also has a non-beamed, non-bladed version of the lightsaber hilt. But for Luke, I would have preferred also if we had gotten either two versions, a one with beam and one without beam, or give us this one with the means to remove it. And again, it doesn't look like it is something that can detach. Um, I have looked at it very closely and thought that there was the means to detach it. Doesn't seem to be the case at all. So you only get one lightsaber, and the one lightsaber that you get is one that's already extended out with its blade. Moving along for his accessories, he also comes included with his wooden cane. Something, again, more trademark for me thinking of how I want to display the figure. As I'm kind of reviewing these characters, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, how do I want to display said character? Well, I think for Luke, for this particular look of Luke, I'm probably going to be displaying him with the backpack, which we've already got on his back, and I'm going to be displaying him with the wooden cane. The wooden cane does have some really nice looking paint there to it. It does have the closest thing you could get for what it is to be kind of a wood grain. They haven't necessarily carved in the wood grain. Instead, rather instead, actually, they've just gone the route of painting it to kind of make it look like simulated grain. It's a little on the shiny side. I would have preferred if it wasn't as shiny, a little bit more duller in color. But he does also come with a wooden cane. Something also that the figure comes included with is his necklace. Now, I took the liberty of leaving it off for the beginning of this review so that you guys can see what it looks like. It has some nice silvers and browns to it with a slightly more translucent pink, as you can see there, bottom end of it. It's a very thin, threaded necklace, so caution when you are putting it over top of the figure. And again, I left it off for the time being just so I could show you what it looks like. It's a little harder to kind of get it around his hood, but once you get past the hood section, you just drape it around the side. There we go. And on the other side there. And there's Luke's necklace in place. He also comes included with a compass, as you can see here, that's been painted in almost a very dark gunmetal silver. As you can see, there's some carvings and etchings done on the front, and like in the movie, it can open up, showcasing some very intricate paint and sculpting on the interior there. The center globe, almost, of the compass is a translucent blue plastic, and you can see there's a fair bit of detail that they've added for such a small trinket as this. Even the under section of the lid, as you can see, has some really nice carvings and etchings into it. Now the figure does hold it, but not really with this hand here. Sort of revealing my hand early. Here's one of the hands that come include with the figure. You can kind of see it's suited for either the force or actually it's a little bit better suited for holding the compass. 
it sits just on the two fingers right there and it sits in between there we go just be in between this finger these two fingers here and the thumb there and providing you get it in the right place that compass jack isn't going to be going anywhere so again i really like that they do include not only accessories but at the very least they also include hands suited for holding the accessories last but certainly not least for his accessories he comes with a series of little small tools now the problem with the tools is from what i can see there's no section on the figure in which you can actually store them um, the problem is that they are very very small but there's no slotted sections anywhere that i can see on his backpack nor is there sections anywhere on his pants or on his belt so ultimately it means that you're just going to have these extra tools kicking around and I would probably suggest at the very least keeping them in a bag. Just keep them in a small Ziploc bag so you're not going to ultimately lose them. Or just keep them in the box in the supply tray designated for these tools. They vary in size. They vary in shape. And my guess is they also vary in the types of projects and implications. The tools, the required projects that you would use these tools for. The big problem again though is if you look at any of the hands, none of the hands are really suited for holding any of these tools. At the very least, the one that grips both the gloved hand and the regular human hand are just simply way too big. If you take one of the tools, for example, and wedge it in between his finger, I guess you could put it in between his finger and his thumb, but in all honesty, it just seems like it doesn't belong there. Like, like so, and often at times, even when you are putting the tools, I'll put this one down here for a second, even when you are putting the tools into his hand, it just doesn't seem like they belong there. They seem way too small. They feel like they are out of place. So at the very least, probably, like I said, going to be displaying Luke with the, 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 the walking stick, the wooden walking stick, and I'm probably just going to leave these tools off altogether. The very, very, very last thing we'll have a look at before we get into the figure is the various different hands that he comes included with. Now, I, for the sake of showing you all the various hands, have removed the hands from Luke. Somewhat ironic, really, on the one hand that he would lose his hand, but I opted to take the other one as well. I'm just a monster. Having a look at the three various gloved hands, again, some of them are suited for holding specific tools. Like, again, there was those smaller little individual screwdrivers, which, again, I think just are, you could fit them onto, once again, looking at this hand here, fit them in between the thumb and the finger, but they just seem way too small. Just pry that in place, get it in between the thumb and the pointer finger. And like I said, you, you can put the tools in there. I personally think they look a little ridiculous. Why would you want to display Luke necessarily holding tools in his hand like this? But he does have a gripping hand, slightly gestured hand outward. He also has a slightly gripping hand, and he also has the force hand in the three different gloved versions, variants of the hands. And then when you get to the human hands, the human hands he comes with, again, kind of a force pushed hand or a hand that you could use for the compass we already looked at that comes with a slightly relaxed hand and he also comes with a gripping hand best suited for holding his cane holding the lightsaber or holding the lightning rod so let's have a look at the figure now luke goes through various costume changes and various looks over the course of last jedi personally speaking this is kind of the look that i prefer him in i wasn't really a big fan of the shorter haired luke Near the end of Last Jedi, I kind of like this as my go-to look for Luke. All the more reasoning why I wanted to pick this one up. Before we have a look at the head sculpt, which I really, I really like the head sculpt on this particular figure, we'll have a look at the outfit that he's currently wearing. Now he's got a long jacket, as you can see here, that drapes kind of in a larger way, feeling as if he might have found this jacket on the planet in which he was kind of hermiting, or he might have crafted the outfit himself. Underneath that, he is wearing a tunic with a hood that you can actually fold the hood over, covering slightly over top of his face. One of the possible potential ways that I'm going to be displaying the figure. He's got himself a leather black uh, belt here, black pants, black slacks, and then he's also got a pair of slightly brown, slightly dark brown boots. As you can see, that kind of look like they have wrappings wrapped around them. This is the only section of his outfit, really, that has some wear and tear to them. They've gone in and what looks to be edged only the very, very like the dividing ends of each of the strappings. Looks like they've painted a slightly lighter shade of this brown. 
The boots have some natural wear and scuffing to them. And they've even actually gone on the underside. And it's a little harder to make out, but there's a little bit of just scuffing on the undersoles here. I'm actually curious, I'm fascinated by the fact that the soles don't have really any texturing to them. I'd be curious to see what the boots actually did look like in the film. I would imagine Hot Toys are pulling from source material. I can't imagine, based on these boots, these would have much of a tread or a or a, or gripping to them whatsoever. But, like I said, there's the under treads, the under soles of Luke's shoes. The figure also comes included with a black poncho and beige cross body bag. But don't want to get ahead of ourselves, because I know I haven't spent enough time looking at the head sculpt here. So once again, we'll just take the hood off. The hood does appear to have a wire frame, just in case you guys are wondering, and you can see the texturing that they've done, the type of material, I should say, that they've used for the hood. The, whole, the hood naturally folds back and drapes in a way that it, sh it looks comfortable and doesn't look awkward against Luke's jacket here. So let's have a look at the face. Now, Again, personally speaking, I really like this head sculpt. Luke does sport a slightly shorter hairstyle later into the film and a slightly varied beard from this, but I kind of like this more of a hermit look of Luke. The head sculpt, though, is spot on. I can't think of any ways of which I would have changed the head sculpt to make this look any bit closer to Luke Skywalker. I think this is probably, without a doubt, one of the best, closest likenesses, because it seems Hot Toys does struggle from time to time getting a likeness dead on for Luke Skywalker, and it seems to me, at least based on my own opinion, that one of the closest head sculpts just happens to be, ironically, an older Luke rather than some of the younger Lukes that we have gotten before. Natural age spots and wrinkles are very clearly apparent here on the head sculpt, and I love the way that they've also added very natural graying to his beard. It's not completely gray, it's not like Obi-Wan, but at the very least you can see like there's this individual hairs, just slight individual hairs separating one from one another, and you can see some of them are slightly lighter and some of them are, some of them are slightly darker. Without a doubt, though, I do think this looks like Luke Skywalker. They've even got, like, the little moles and stuff on the sides of his face. Uh, even if you look at the neck, if we just peel back the hood for one second, you can see that there's some natural wrinkles forming there, and even the beard is slightly darker on the under neck. I love his long hair that they've, they've given him. Slightly grayed and, of course, weathered for the conditions that he has been living on this planet. I don't, again, I don't think there's anything I would necessarily have changed differently to make this look closer like Mark Hamill. One of the other things he has for his outfit here is a black poncho. It actually sort of just drapes over the shoulder section of the figure's torso. Uh, to do this, the easiest thing I found to do was to take the head sculpt off completely, and it just detaches very carefully via a ball joint. There we go, now Luke's headless. There's a close-up look at his head sculpt, just in case you guys wanted to see a slightly closer, close, close look at it. Just a phenomenal head sculpt. To not sound, hopefully, like a broken record, there is nothing I would have changed differently to this head sculpt. I'm very, very happy with how this turned out. Needless to say, what we are going to do, though, is we're going to take the poncho. The belts, actually, these little straps here, should be facing forward, so... You want to take the hood, and I just kind of bring the hood up like this, feed it through the hold neck area of the poncho, just bring it down, and then I'm going to bring this to the side, like that. I can then bring the hood back down, and then we're going to go ahead and revisit uh, the head sculpt there of Luke, and just fit it back into the ball joint. With the hood now out of the poncho, you can then still drape it over if you wish, and we're just going to fix this all up onto the back here. There we go. And just bring this out to the front. So you can still bring the hood up successfully. Just want to get it around Luke's hair. There we go. And on the other side. And again, you can still put the hood over top of Luke's head while still having him wearing the poncho. As I said, he also comes with this beige shoulder strap bag, which in all honesty, I probably should have put on before I put on the poncho. But we'll get a close look at it, and then we'll go ahead and I'll add it back to the body. The poncho, or the bag here, does open up. And I guess in theory, you could put those tools. You know those tools I couldn't find a place for? 
you could, I guess, in theory, put them inside the tote bag here, the little strapped bag. Uh, it is a rather tight-fitting bag, so I guess for that I'll probably want to take, I'll take all the poncho off, and I'll show you how that works. Yes, to get the beige strap bag on Luke's torso, obviously I would have to take the poncho back off, and I find it's actually easier too if you leave the head sculpt off also. Um, it doesn't have as much of a clearance as you might think it would be, so you do find at one point you have to slightly stretch it. Let me show you what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to bring the hood up. I'm just going to feed the bag around the hood, bring this around. I can drop this back down. Nothing really more we have to do there. And then I'm just going to bend the arm up. This is the, this is the part where you feel like you're almost having to stretch it a little bit more and get it around the shoulder section, just like that. Once that's in place, of course, you can then go back and just kind of adjust the jacket. You can bring the arm back down. And then the only other thing you're going to want to do, just put that right back there, is you're going to go ahead and take Luke's head and put it back down onto the ball socket. And I figured while I was at it, I was also going to put the poncho back on him as well. The only thing you really can't put on Luke in this look is his backpack. Um, there's just... There's just so much other stuff going on here. I really wouldn't want to run the straps over top of it. I guess you, in theory, could. So instead, I think for this particular look, the go-to look, I think I'm going to go with this particular figure. I would probably just have the bag kind of draped in his hand and display him on his display stand like this. Again, there's a what I like about this particular figure is there are various different looks that you can go with. You can leave the poncho off if you want. You can have the hood up, for example. And that's one thing I really do like about this particular figure. It's the one thing that I think adds the charm to this particular figure versus, again, like how Luke looks later on in the film. Here he kind of looks more like a hermit. Later on in the film, he looks closer to being like a Jedi. So looking at the figure's articulation, the head rotates technically all the way around. I don't really know why you would want to rotate it all the way around. It hinges up, it hinges down, it hinges left and right. All the things that a ball joint would give you, would grant you. Um, the thing is, though, as we already looked at the head sculpt, the portrait is already attached to the neck, so the neck attaches to the ball joint. It seems fewer and fewer times you'll ever see now heads being separate pieces, as Hot Toys clearly sees now they don't want to start breaking up the sculpt from the neck to the top of the head. So the whole thing, the head and the neck, are one piece, and then that's attached to the ball joint down below. Uh, he does also have an upper torso crunch and a waist swivel, something of which I didn't actually mention in the figure when we were looking at the, uh, the costume, the outfit that they give him, is that I do feel a noticeable amount of extra padding right here. Likely this is the case because they just wanted to fill out the standard, probably the standard body that they're using underneath, just to fill it out a little bit more, just to give him a little bit extra size, maybe for the few extra pounds that Mark Hamill has gained over the years. The arms hinge outward on both sides, actually, and you can rotate them forward, you can rotate them back. He has a swivel on the top cut, basically where the shoulder section is, there's a swivel there. This whole bicep section here swivels. He has a double hinge on the elbow, and he also has a swivel that rotates the hand all the way around and hinges back and forth. For his legs, his legs go out, his legs go forward, his legs go back, and he also has a swivel on the top cut of his thigh. Luke has a double hinge on the knee. The boot technically does rotate, although it really only rotates over top of the fabric of the pants. The boots, however, the foot portion of the boots rotate all the way around, they hinge up and down, and they also rock back and forth because they also are sitting on ball joints. When the time comes to eventually display Last Jedi Luke, this is probably going to be the look that I'm going to go with. I really was on the fence debating back and forth whether I wanted to display him with the poncho. And even though I really like the look of the poncho, I think this is the look that I like much rather instead. I'm going to give him the walking stick, and I'm also going to put on the backpack on his back. That's just, again, the look that I wanted to go with when displaying this particular figure. And an argument, really, as to why you would want to be picking up maybe the exclusive versus the standard release. The Porg and, of course, the Lightning Rod. I guess the Porg of the two things are the better of the accessories. The Lightning Rod I'll probably never display with the figure. But I think the backpack really should have included with the standard release. I just feel like the backpack kind of finishes off the figure, kind of gives him some extra depth and extra story behind his display. 
and I think really uh, it should have probably been in included with the standard release. But again, all the more the reasoning why you would probably want to get the exclusive release of Luke Skywalker versus the standard. <laughs> and why not? Why not in Final Looks display Last Jedi Luke Skywalker with a flying Porg resting on his arm? Well, it's not so much flying anymore as it is just resting on his arm, but I think these things are absolutely adorable. Personally speaking, I would have loved if Hot Toys for the Air exclusive release of Last Jedi Luke Skywalker maybe would have included more Porgs than just the one. Maybe two, maybe three, maybe 17 of them. Okay, that's maybe a little over the top, but nonetheless, uh, I think they're absolutely adorable. Maybe I'm the only one that feels that way. Give us more Porgs. If you're on the fence as to whether you want to get the standard or the exclusive release, let me advocate for the idea of maybe getting the exclusive over the standard. I think the inclusion of the backpack is the sell for me for wanting to get the exclusive. Oh right, yeah, and you also get an adorable Porg. I'm still perplexed as to why Hot Toys didn't include the backpack. If you ask me, a much needed accessory for Luke Skywalker as part of their standard release. Maybe they thought that was going to be the one thing that nudged collectors more towards getting the exclusive release versus the standard. Oh, and maybe the Porg might have had something to do with that as well. Either way, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you can currently head on over to Alter Ego Comics. They should have Last Jedi Luke Skywalker still in stock. At least they still had it in stock when I, when I got this one for myself. Uh, one of the things also with Alter Ego Comics is they're regularly updating their inventory of six scale figures, collectible statues, and more. So periodically, you may want to swing on over there and see the stuff that they currently have in stock. The thing about Alter Ego Comics that's good as well from all the past experiences that I've had with them is some of the things, the benefits of using them as your online go-to site is that they ship in double mailer boxes. What does that mean exactly? Well, if you're picking six scale figures up for yourself, you know if you order directly from Hot Toys, they ship inside a mailer box. Well, Alter Ego Comics does one better and they ship inside a larger cardboard box as well. That guarantees you that the box isn't going to get damaged the Hot Toys mailer box, that is, when it gets from their warehouse to your house. It's just that little bit of extra TLC. Speaking of also TLC, uh, one thing as well is if you're also ordering from Alter Ego Comics, they offer free shipping on most of their six scale figure releases and their customer service is some of the best I've seen online. If you guys are interested in, like I said, picking this one up for yourself, Alter Ego Comics wants to also offer you guys a coupon code SPOT15. Using Spot 15, you can take $15 off your minimum purchase of $150 or more, one coupon code per household. As again, I said, today we were having a look at the uh, Hot Toys. This was the Last Jedi Luke Skywalker, the preferred look for this humbled reviewer for the Last Jedi, even though he's not really the Last Jedi. Uh, if you guys wanted to go back and have a look at some of my other Hot Toys reviews, there's playlists for Hot Toys, and there's also playlists for Star Wars, if Star Wars is more your fancy. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already, as certainly more videos will be coming soon to this channel. I'm getting distracted just looking at that adorable little pork. Those things are so, so cool. <laughs> as always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do. If you've picked up this figure for yourself, let me know down below what you think of Last Jedi Luke Skywalker and which look you prefer Luke to be in, the shorter hair or the longer hair. We'll let the debate reign supreme down below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.